just in my grab car now going to the airport. So today I'll be leaving from Terminal 1. As you can see, the cars are pulling up and we've got porters helping people out of their cars. Now the porter service is available and it's 50 pesos or one US dollar per bag. Now these guys just pull up alongside the car with their trolley, load it up, move it in and expect to get paid. So just be mindful of that. There you go, that lady's just paid for that porter to carry her bags through the airport. As you can see, off they go. So it's a bit unusual really, but they just come back through with their trolleys and back out to meet the arriving cars. Now, you can do this thing yourself, of course. You can grab a trolley and unload your car and take it into the airport, or you can have one of these guys do it for you. As you can see, the terminal is fairly busy at the moment. We've got buses arriving, cars arriving, got some security here, people with wheelchairs for disabled people. We've also got a guy standing here trying to flog some food at a restaurant. We've got an exit and an entrance area. That entrance area takes you to the food court area. This entrance area takes you to where the passengers will be entering. You will be checked by somebody that will ensure you meet the requirements for travel such as your boarding pass or some other evidence that you are traveling today. All right, I'm now gonna proceed through. I need to access my boarding pass, but I do also have a backup hard copy of my ticket in my bag, so I can pull that out if my phone fails. All right, I'll go in. I'll turn my phone off now and I'll turn it back on once I pass this checkpoint. Okay, I've just passed the checkpoint there. The lady just checked me, made sure that I was traveling today. I used the boarding pass on my telephone to do that. As I come into the airport, I notice there's a charging station over there, should I need one. And if you need a charging station or your phone isn't charged, go and charge it because you will need it as you're moving through the airport to keep in touch with friends or loved ones or just to make sure your phone's charged prior to getting onto your plane. There's a lot of other charging ports around the place, so you don't necessarily have to use that one, but I'm just pointing out that one is available. There's also an information counter immediately opposite the entry doors in the airport. So if you need any information, proceed to the information counter. We have the screens above. It's easier to find the destination first and then find the flight and the counter you need to be checking in on. So once you've done that, identify your check-in counter and go directly to that counter. Today I'm flying with Philippine Airlines. Now the queues here are quite small this time of day, so I don't have to worry too much about waiting around for too long. I am flying coach class or economy. As you enter the airport through one of those entry doors, and I just came in through that door there, check my flight details, which is up here, and I've now joined the queue to get to the counter where I'm departing. We will have to go through a bag check over here. Now, at this point, they will remove any items that shouldn't be in your bag, flammable goods, that type of thing. They'll also do a chemical scan of your bag with one of those wipes that they put in a machine. And this could take a considerable amount of time depending on the queue that's in front of you. Hence why you should always arrive here with significant amount of time in front of you because you don't know how long this queue is going to be. And then of course, we've got to join the queue at immigration and we don't know how, how long that's going to be either. But safe to say that this airport's pretty comfortable and the queue is moving quite well at the moment because there's not that many people here. But I would hate to join this queue if it was three or four times as long. The other thing is some people have parcels like this mob over here. You can see that 
the, the load of parcels there, and that's going to take a long time to get checked through. They have to open every box, go through it, make sure that everything's okay. And if it's a television set, you know, they may even pull it out and have a look around and make sure the screws haven't been removed and, you know, all of their checks and balances, right? So you get a couple of people like that in front of you, and the queue's going to start looking like this queue over here. I certainly don't want to be behind a whole heap of people with boxes like these people over here. All right, and as you can see, they've got a lot of boxes that they're going to check through. Or this mob over here, there's a lot of boxes to be checked in. So every one of those parcels is going to be opened up and checked to make sure that it doesn't contain anything that's not allowed on the airline right when you arrive at departures you'll also have some atms available for you you can withdraw some money should you need it i don't know why you'd really need any money if you're leaving the country anyway but you might want some currency on you to buy something inside the airport Okay, the public waiting area is further on in there, as you can see. I'm in departures, I'm gonna keep this video to departures. I have done a full Terminal 1 airport guide, but let's keep this one to departures because I wanna try and keep it short and relevant to those people leaving via this terminal. I'm going to now pass through immigration. To get through here, I'll need to show my passport and my boarding pass. And when I go through to the immigration counter, the immigration officer will check to see that I haven't exceeded my stay conditions or there aren't any other conditions preventing me from leaving the Philippines, such as a warrant or anything of that nature. After which, they will just stamp my passport and I will proceed through to security check and my carry-on baggage will be scanned as will my person then I will proceed on to my gates well, let's move forward there's a sign there that says scan for e-travel if you haven't already completed your e-travel declaration you will need to complete that e-travel declaration Now I will need to turn my telephone off. Once you pass security screening, you can then turn and identify where your gate is located. That's easy done. Just as in any airport, look for the signs above. And you will find the gates and where to proceed. There you go. There's also a number of water stations. I brought an empty bottle with me and some coffee. I can fill up there. So I've got my Gatorade bottle and my Copico instant three-in-one coffee. I'm gonna put the Copico in the Gatorade bottle and then I'm gonna fill it up in the machine and get myself a cheap cup of coffee. And it's also a cup of coffee that I enjoy. I don't mind this stuff. It is a bit sweet for some, but for a easy cup of coffee, I think it's great value. I've just put my Copy Co into the Gatorade bottle. Now, I've chosen the Gatorade bottle because it's quite thick. It's not like your regular water bottles that you find here in the Philippines. It's a thick bottle, so it'll insulate your hand a little better from the hot water, and also it won't buckle under the hot water as well. I usually use about half the bottle of hot water and about a quarter of the bottle with warm water. Then I shake it up and that gives me what you can see in front of you. And that'll be a lovely cup of coffee. I usually take a couple of sachets onto the plane with me and a couple of other instant options such as ginger tea, that type of thing, that I can have whilst in flight. Some people may prefer an iced coffee. If that's the case, just use the cold water instead. Having come through security 
screening down there. I'm now going to have a bit of a walk around the airport. Overseas worker transit lounges are upstairs. Toilets. Some coffee shops, Cafe Express, uh, small snacks. Souvenir shops. I wouldn't buy any souvenirs at the airport. Some duty free type shops. Snacks. And as you can see, it's quite a small departure area. I've now come to the other side of the airport where the other security screening point is. We've got duty free shop here. Lots of goods. We've got a coach store for those people that like that brand. I would recommend dressing quite light when you come to the airport. On a hot day, this airport can be really uncomfortable. Yes, they've got air conditioning, but it's just not good enough. Also, you might want to pack some additional clothes in your carry-on so that you can dress up when you get onto the plane. But either way, just make sure you're not caught in this airport sweating away. Just on that subject, you may want to pack a roll-on as well. Let's go over here and have a look at the planes. It's always nice to have a look at. You can see all of the airlines out there lining up. It's Terminal 1. For those people that don't like the colour of the carpet, I'm sorry. Put in a complaint to the airport. Let's walk down this way now. Greens are valuable. You'll find a few of them around the place. They keep you updated on the current status of flights. And if your flight's on there and you can see its current status, such as uh, Bangkok, Xiamen, um, underneath is departing from gate number 15, as you can see, and it is boarding at the moment. So if your flight has boarding next to it or it has a status change of any description, well, that's the place you'll see it. They'll also announce it over a PA, but sometimes you miss that. <laughs> also see some smaller displays around the place, such as this one here. It doesn't actually tell you the destination, but it does tell you the flight number and its current status. Now, well, just for reference, we came in from this point here We've just been over that way over there, and now we're going to go from this point down to this point. This is the Mahaba Lounge. This is only available for members. Usually they get their membership through credit card suppliers. Um, they have a, a complimentary pass, or you can buy uh, passes with certain organizations, like Dragon Pass, that type of thing and you can get membership to access the lounge. You won't be able to pay to enter the lounge here. All right, next one we've got on the, in the airport is the Puff Lounge. Now, this is interesting because in the Puff Lounge, you can actually smoke a cigarette, but you've got to pay for entrance. So get that right. So they've got you there because if you want to smoke a cigarette and you know you've got a an eight hour flight or a 12 hour flight, you're gonna be pretty desperate. So guess what? You're paying for it. So they'll let you smoke a cigarette in this airport if you can come up with the money. Now, let's go down to the next area down below. You will see here that it opens up quite wide to uh, an air, uh, boarding gates on either side. So you've got boarding gates on that side, boarding gates on that side. Looking right at an aircraft, that's a great, great photograph there. Another one over here. Oh, there's coffee in front of me. Now if it does get too warm around the airport for you, 
I would suggest going down to where. Oh, stop talking. Down to Bangkok. Good luck, thank you. If it does get too hot for you in and around the airport, I'd suggest going down towards gate 10, gate 14. That's a lower deck in the airport, so the cooler air will tend to sit down in that lower area of the airport and you'll tend to be a little cooler than you are upstairs where you first come in. We can just come down from those escalators there. We can see gate 14, gate 12. Nice airline there. Lots of water still around the place. Toilets here. Official waiting area. Gate 17. For gate 17 you do have to go downstairs. It's not open at the moment, but that can be confusing as you're walking around here looking for gate 17 or gate 18 for that matter. It's downstairs. You will be called through to pass the final check and walk down to your aircraft. A sad moment leaving the Philippines once again, but don't worry Philippines, I'll be back soon.